So uh, today we are continuing with our series entitled Walk the Talk. And this is our week four. And we'd like to ask everyone to please stand up on their feet in reverence to the Word of God as we begin to read from Psalm 119, verse 137 to 144. And let me read it to everyone. Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. You have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in all faithfulness. My zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. Your promise is well tried, and your servant loves it. I am small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Your righteousness is righteous forever, and your law is true. Trouble and anguish have found me out, but your commandments are my delight. Your testimonies are righteous forever. Give me understanding that I may live. This is the word of God for all of us today. Lord God, in the name of Jesus Christ, we are asking that this word, God, will breathe, Lord, with your life. I'm thankful, Lord God, that this word, once it's breathed out by you, Lord, it will come alive, God, and help us, Lord, breathe through our seasons, Lord, that we may have your life the way you wanted us to live, Lord. Holy Spirit, would you speak in and through me? I pray that you will be with me, not me speaking, Lord, but I am just a vessel, God, for your anointing to flow. I even pray, Holy Spirit, that you will, Lord, um, open our understanding that we may also see, God, how this particular word will begin to apply in our lives. All this we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may now take your seats. As you all know, um, the very reason why we have, um, we've started this series is because we want to uphold the Word of God. And when you look at the Bible, the Bible is the Word of God. And in one particular chapter in the book of Psalm, it actually speaks about the importance of God's Word that is really found in the book of Psalm 119. When we have um, started the series, we look at you know, the importance of each of this and begin to apply it in our own lives. Jewish literature has actually made a very good um, uh, way in a, in a literary form coming from their own Hebraic alphabet, and that is how the psalmist has actually proclaimed the importance of God's Word. Why do we need to have God's Word in our life? Do you know that life is an adventure? Tama po ba? Many times we have no idea what life may bring. I'm so thankful that God has given us, you know, this new life. I'm so thankful for the sun. I'm so thankful for the air that I breathe. I'm thankful with my family. I'm, there's a lot of great things I can be thankful to God for. But there are also moments wherein I may not feel like I'm thankful because of the challenges that may come my way. But I believe in the midst of all this, when I look at God's Word, I begin to sense now, Lord God, you're going to empower me with your Word. So therefore, instead of us looking at the difficulties in life, the afflictions in life, the problems in life, why not rather look at life as an adventure to live? Are we here? Pag sinabi po natin adventure, you know, every day, you remember a child, remember pagka, pagka birthday na niya, you know, dad, ilang tulog na lang ba ang birthday ko? It's an adventure because they know that for that particular one day, they will have a celebration that is really meant for them alone. When we look at God's Word, it's not just meant for, for the psalmist to write about God's Word. It's actually meant for all of us, modern-day church, because we are that special in the eyes of God. Therefore, in the midst of whatever life may bring to all of us, what we will tackle today is to choose the Word. There are so many choices we can have today, lalong-lalo na po in the pandemic, there, it opened up a whole realm of preaching and teaching, and uh, minsan nga, ang dami mo nang papanood. 
Okay kung yun dati, gusto mong mapanood itong famous preacher sa Amerika, pero hindi ka makapunta kasi nga wala kang budget. It is only just a click of a finger, you're able to see the video cast and the podcast of that famous preacher. You know, choosing the Word of God. I'm here, I'm here not to promote on whatever online preacher that the, uh, that the technology has to offer, but I'm here to tell you personally, choose the Word. It is not about who's preaching, whether it's me, a local pastor preaching the Word, or whether it's an international speaker in a world-renowned um, church. I pray that you will choose the Word. Ikaw mismo. Because the importance and the strength of the Word of God is really dependent on how much you apply it in your own life. How relevant is God's Word for everyone? The Bible says, even the psalmist actually says, Righteous are you, O Lord, and right are your rules. It's coming from an understanding that God is righteous. We all know what righteous means. It's actually in the right standing. God is right. He will always be right, and He is actively right. Anytime, every day, every minute, He is right. In fact, the very reason why we have a, uh, an understanding of wrong, it's because God is right. In fact, if we have an understanding of unholiness, it's because God is holy. We have an understanding now of what's bad because of the characteristic of God, which is God is good. In the same way, the, the psalmist mentioned about God, you are righteous, Lord. Even in the midst of my situation that's not, you know, that's not right in my own eyes, I believe that these things would allow us to see that God is right. When we understand that God is righteous, then everything that would emanate from God is also righteous. Ang isda, hindi po sa lumalangoy para ipatunayan sa atin na isda siya. Kaya sa lumalangoy dahil isda siya. Now, in the same, at the same manner, when you look at who uh, our God is, Him being righteous, so therefore, everything that comes out from Him is right. And He will make you right. He will make your life straight, even in the midst of crooked path. He will make your life become an adventure. So therefore, the psalmist says, Righteous are you, O Lord. Right are your rules. Every time I face situations in life, whether good or bad, I know where I stand and I'm standing on solid ground and I am standing on God Himself because familiarity precipitates reverence. What do you mean by this? The way I know my God is the way I will approach Him. The way I know my God is the way I'm going to be standing on His Word and say, God, kahit anong mangyari, Lord, my faith will never even be uh, uh, shaken because you are the God who's unshakable. Familiarity precipitates reverence. How much of God do you know? Do you know that the Bible points us towards the knowledge of who God is. Paano ka ba nalaman na God is good? Because the Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Ngayon, dapat ko rin may experience that God is good. And because God is good, I revere Him as my God. I respect Him as my God. I honor Him and I worship Him. That every time, you know, when, when Doyle actually sang to us this, this worship song, I was in tears, in reverence to my God because I understood. Familiarity precipitates reverence. You know why people are irreverent and they would blame God? Because they don't know God that personally. Napakadaling i-blame lahat ng mga pagsu. Ikaw kasi, tayo ginawa. Ay, ituro mo na ituro kay Lord John, God is still good. God is still holy. And He is still a great God. 
The Bible says in Psalm 138, you have appointed your testimonies in righteousness and in faithfulness. God's Word talks about His righteousness. God's Word talks about His faithfulness. Whether I am unfaithful to God or not, God will always remain faithful to me. You know, I realize in my own life, I've been, uh, I've been alive uh, for five decades now. Approaching six. Excited na po ako, magkaroon 20%. <laughs> At free movies, di ba? But in the midst of my journey in life, God is faithful. There were bumps, there were great times, there were honeymoon moments with God. But in all of those times, God is faithful. Kapatid, familiarity precipitates your reverence. Yes, alam mo na God is faithful. Pero na-experience mo ba sa puso mo how faithful God is to you? I pray that you would continue to choose God's Word because in God's Word, you will understand that He is righteous and He is faithful. So everything that, will, that I read in the Bible would talk about God's righteousness in my life and God's faithfulness to me. If God is faithful to me, God can likewise be faithful to your children. And God will be faithful to your children's children. Ganun ka faithful si God. Hindi niya malilimutan lahat because character niya yon. Now, these are the qualities that would emanate from the very nature of who God is. And I would encourage you, choose the Word. Because in the Word, you will understand who God is and what He can do in your life. And many times, when things are being challenged, there might be a tendency that we forget how faithful God is. Or maybe there are moments when things are not challenged, just chill. Chill lang kami. Chill lang, Lord. Cool lang tayo, Lord. There might also be moments when we forget God. And in the midst of a lot of distractions, and daming distraction po ngayon. How many of you believe that God is always waking us up and say, my son, my daughter, I love you. Come. Familiarity precipitates your reverence of God. That is why today we're going to talk about excellent courses of action. No matter where life will bring us, remember I mentioned to you that life is a journey. Kahit anong journey kang pumunta, tatayo ka lang, right, left, forward, backward, it's an adventure. That is why let us make an excellent course of action to take, uh, um, an excellent course of action to take as we trust God and choose His Word. There are many, there are many um, um, things that would happen in, in our lives. So therefore, one course is that regardless of any chapter in life that we are in, we choose the Word of God. I mentioned to you that, you know, um, um, when, when I'm already in my five decades of living out my life. For the past two decades, I was living my life on my own because I became born again when I was 21 or 22 years old. From that particular time that I became born-again believer, there was the zeal and the passion that I want to know God more. When this church was actually younger in the 80s, magkakilala po kaming lahat. Hindi kami separate sa isa't isa. We know exactly who we are and you know, ang anak, ang ganito, kasi nakatira. We know exactly who we are. And we know that we can encourage each one with our faith. And that is why what we call as the zeal, the zeal and the passion of serving God. The psalmist says, my zeal consumes me because my foes forget your words. You know that there are people who are um, 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 detesting the word of God. And how many of you believe dahil sa mga pangyayaring ganon, your zeal can be exhausted because of what's happening. Pero kapatid, kung meron kang relationship kay Lord Jesus at kilala mo siya, whether my foes 
forget your words or whether my friends forget your words, my zeal will continue to be with you. And it isn't about my zeal is going to be exhausted because of what people around me are doing. It's because my zeal is based on the Spirit of God that has revealed Himself to me. Let that zeal and that passion be with you today. The Bible likewise says, Your promise is well tried, and your servant loves it. Yun yung zeal, yung pagmamahal mo kay Lord, at yung energy na inexud mo para mapakita mo kay Lord na mahal mo siya. There are moments when, you know, you can love God through praise and worship. There are moments when you can love God through your service. You can love God any t- kind of way that you can because God loves you first. I read an article in the internet that talks about different chapters in life of a person. Medyo tinanggal ko na po kasi medyo yung iba hindi appropriate for all of us. But you know that in every chapter that we are living, whether you're, you're in your 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, kahit anong chapter ng buhay mo, I would encourage you, choose God's Word. Because God's Word will make you come alive. I read it in the internet that they say when people are in their teens, it is a thought of adventure begins. And I don't know about you, but my daughter Hannah, who's 10 years old, she's excited. She considers herself, Dad, I'm a preteen. Okay, kung maka preteen naman, 10 years old pa lang, para, don't be in a hurry to grow up, sweetheart. Enjoy your childhood. And she does. She loves to play around. And it, even in our, in our church, you know, we make importance in partnering with you parents to make sure that our kids, young as they are, they will know God, they will worship God, they will hear the Word of God because we want them to, pre- to be prepared on whatever life may bring to them. Thrilling teens. Remember the time na teenager ka? Di ba ito yung parang, who oh, adventure begins? In fact, my adventure began when I was in grade 5. Kaya yung anak ko medyo ganyan, kasi grade 5 din po ako, yung tatay niya kasi medyo adventurous na kagad. And that is the reason why we have Every Nation Campus. Because we want to have this church thrive with young people crying out and praying and praising and loving God. And then, after teens, we call it the terrific 20s. Again, binago ko na po ito para maging appropriate po para sa ating lahat. At times, because people are in their teens and they have Every Nation Campus, pagdating ng pagiging 20s niya, nakakalimutan na niya yung passion, yung zeal ba? It's a sense of purpose unfolds. Remember the time that when you graduated in college, you're, you're, you wanted to have your own career, and then the first paycheck, remember, your first paycheck, oh, come on, libre galore. Sabi ko kay mama, ma, wherever you want to eat, Akala mo naman, laki ng sweldo ko yan, no? Diyan lang tayo sa labas. Kain tayo sa labas. Naglabas lang po kami ng table para kumain kami sa labas. Pero luto pa rin niya. And then we have the tremendous 30s. So, sino ba yung mga tremendous? Oh, don't have to raise your hands. Baka kinakabahan kayo. Baka magpataas ako ng kamay. In your 30s, there is the progress of discovery and exploration. Remember nung 30s ka pa? Hindi ka na bagets. Hindi ka naman super mature. Pero there's a process of, ito yung nadidiscover mo, ang dami mo nalalaman. And then you have your fabulous 40s. Okay? Yung mga 40s dyan, di ba? You look fabulous today. Tama ba? Okay, look at the person beside you. Baka ba fabulous? Yes. It's a time of promotion. Yung mga 40s na yan, nai-establish na yan. Okay? Kaya medyo... May malaking-laking savings na yung mga yan. O, tinan mo, eh, pari mayaman ka na ba? 40s ka na eh. And then the 50s, my era. It's a preparation for what lies ahead. And then we have the 60s, the sizzling 60s. Yesterday, I was in life begins at, you know, it's a moment for us just to gather the 50s and the 60s and really read, read and listen to the Word of God, which, by the way, I invite everyone, come and join us once, once a month lang po ginagawa natin yung Life Begins At, it's open for those who are 50s and 60s. 
But in your 60s, you have a new season of discovery. Kasi nga, meron ka ng, meron ka ng uh, retirement, uh, you know, uh, that you're looking at, pero may discovery ka na nalalaman. And then the superb 70s, where it's an appreciation of life, and the enchanting 80s, if God will give it to us, it's a year of thanksgiving for life's beauty. Why do I have to say this? Because this is a moment where in every chapter of our lives, we choose to stand on the Word of God. And if we choose to stand in the Word of God, all of this description, thrilling, terrific, tremendous, fabulous, fantastic, sizzling, superb, and enchanting, that is an adventure of life. Huwag po niyong iisipin, ah, pag naging kaedad ko na si tatay, doon pa lang ako magiging Christian. Kasi I have so much life to give today. No, as young as you are, live your life to the fullest. Because Jesus said, I've come that you may have life and life to the full. Because in every chapter of life, choose God's Word, for it is proven, it is tried and tested, it is absolutely perfect, inerrant, and infallible. Because we understand that God's Word has been written ages ago. Hindi ka pa pinapanganak, may salita na ng Diyos. That is why, choose God's Word. Regardless of any circumstance in life that we, we are in, there are moments when you feel you're small, you're not significant, and you're despised. But the psalmist says, Yet I do not forget your precepts. Remember moments we're in when you wake up in the morning, you don't feel like, you know, you don't feel confident. Kasi nga nakataas yung buhok mo. Ano ba naman yan? O may nakita kang puti. Ano ba naman yan? Yan ang puting buhok yan. That's part of life. It's the wisdom. But there are moments when you try to whatever your, your, whatever situation that you are in, it dictates the way your day is going to be lived out. Look at the psalmist. He said, Yet, I do not forget your precepts. Being small and despised can actually be inflicted by yourself or by others. Pag meron ka mga ginagawa na kaya mo, kaya ka medyo depressed or discouraged, it's because maybe meron ka naman talagang ginawa na talagang ka-depressed-depressed at ka-discouraged. But you have to stand on God's Word. Or whether that has been inflicted by other people, you stand in God's Word and say, Lord, even if I'm small and despised, yet I do not forget your precepts. Every moment, every chance that I have, I read God's Word. And I choose to stand in my convictions because God is righteous and is righteous forever and therefore it makes His law become true which means that in every circumstance we face in life, choose God's Word because it speaks about God's unconditional love and God's unfailing and enduring love for all of you. The Bible is actually written to show to all of us how much God loves us. And it wasn't to show to us how much God is going to punish us. No. Binaliktad mo, kapatid. The Bible expresses God's great love. God loves you. And without a shadow of a doubt, He will never fail loving you. Therefore, wherever circumstance that you're facing today, choose God's Word. And allow God's Word expressing His love for you. Finally, when you choose God's Word, it's regardless of any challenge in life that we are in. Psalm says, trouble and anguish. Sino sa inyong may trouble? Don't have to raise your hand. Iyak mo na lang ng konti. Isa lang. Sa patak lang. Moments wherein you have trouble. Moments wherein you feel anguish. Whether it's self-inflicted or others, or whether it's just by circumstance, dumadaan tayo doon. Hindi mo naman alam eh, pag gising mo, mayroon palang trouble. Pag gising mo, pag bukbunan mo sa may anguish pala. But you have to be prepared. Let the commandments of God be your delight. It's there again, the Word. 
Yes, I am small and despised, yet, in the same, in the next verse, yes, I am troubled and anguished, but choose God's word because it will definitely allow you to live your life as an adventure with God. Your testimonies are righteous forever. And give me understanding that I may live. When you are in God's Word, you are in God's presence. When you're in God's presence, He may or He may not give you the understanding, but you choose to live in God's Word. Maybe one day you will understand why you're going through what you're going through. There are still a lot of bucket list questions that I have on my bucket list with God. Hindi ko alam bakit nangyari. Bakit ako? Bakit ganun? Bak- dami kong bakit. And I feel like in this generation, in fact, in the millennial generation, yung generation Y, ang dami niyo mga bakit. Kaya lagay mo lang sa bucket list. Bakit ka ng bakit eh? O, hindi ko kaya magsagutin lahat yun. Hindi mo na ako si Lord. Ngayon, kung magkita kayo ni Lord one day in heaven, Kung nandudun ka, kunin mo na yung bucket list mo at sabihin mo sa kanya, Lord, bakit, bakit, bakit? Pero habang nandito ka, choose to obey and live in God's Word. In every challenge in life that we face, we choose God's Word for it gives us life. And it enables us to have His divine and empowering strength. May pagdadaanan ka, be assured, di ka naman bibigyan ni Lord ng hindi mo kakayanin. Pero pag napagdaanan mo and seemingly hindi mo kaya, bibigyan ka niya ng grace para mapagtagumpayan mo ito. As we choose to live in accordance with God's Word, the more our faith becomes stronger because we are in the presence of God. I'm not just reading the Word of God for the purpose of reading it. I'm reading God's Word because I want to know the author of God's Word, and that is God. When that is happening in my life, my faith becomes stronger however and wherever life may bring us. That is why in every chapter, every circumstance, everything that happens to us, choose God's Word and ask God to give you the grace to obey His Word too. The goal is to transform you until Jesus Christ is formed in every one of us. Amen? Let's all bow our heads right now and pray. Father, First and foremost, God, we thank you for the life that you've given to us. Lord, yung life ko is actually a blessing because you gave it to me, Lord. So therefore, God, whatever circumstance, whatever chapter in life, whatever challenge that I face, Lord, teach me to focus on you, Lord God the author and perfecter of my faith. There may be some challenges along the way, but I know if I'm standing on God's Word, this challenge is an adventure to live because you are with me. If there are people who are here in this room today or maybe online, you haven't given your life to Jesus Christ. How can life be an adventure if you haven't even surrendered your life to Jesus and say, kaya means na didiskaril tayo kasi the first important decision is you decide, Lord, I want you to be my Savior and my Lord. Guess what? I'm going to do that for everyone today. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ for the first time, say this prayer and say, Father, I choose today to receive you as my Savior and Lord. 
I am asking forgiveness for all my sins. Give me the grace to turn away from it and to choose you as my Lord and Savior. I surrender my life to you, Lord Jesus, and I receive the gift of eternal life by faith. Thank you for writing my name in the eternal life. If you pray that prayer, I would like to help you journey the faith. Life is an adventure to live. It's an adventure if you have God on your side. And if you have people with the same faith as you have, we want to help you in your faith. At the end of the service, come and we would be glad to get to know you and to put you in a group where you can grow in love with Jesus Christ. Can you all do that? I want for everyone to please stand up on their feet right now. I want to be praying for specific people today. Nobody looking around, but I want you to close your eyes. Because I feel like there is a ministry moment that will come from the Holy Spirit. Because you know that your faith is probably shaken because of the challenges, the circumstances, and getting old, Lord. Ano mangyayari sa ganito? Ano mangyayari sa ganyan? Lord, ang dami kong ganito, ang dami. Somehow, your faith is being challenged, tested. As every heads are bowed and every eyes are closed, if you feel like you have the strength, you need the strength of God today, or maybe you need to choose to look at the Word of God to give you strength in life. Pag may pinagdadaan ng kasabuhay ngayon at kailangan mo ng strength ni Lord, would you raise both your hands to Him right now? Nobody looking around, please. Let this be a moment between the person and God. Nobody looking around, please. Thank you, Lord God, for these hands. Lift it up. Hindi po ito patungkol sa lahat ng tao. Iyong tao lang po. Isang tao ito at kay Lord nakatingin. Whatever you're facing today, would you say to God right now, and say, Lord, ito po'y pinagdadaanan ko. And somehow, God, nasishake ako dito, Lord. Whatever it is, say it to God. Choose to live your life for God. And let God bring you His times of refreshing that will come from His Spirit. Lord, you see your, your children, God, your sons and your daughters, Lord. Marami po sa kanila, Lord. Marami po sa amin. Ang hirap na pinagdadaanan, Lord. But God, give us a bright perspective, God. Because when we choose you, we choose life, we choose you, Father God, and you will bring us life. I am praying today for a fresh level of faith to come upon everyone raising up their hands. I am praying today that the Holy Spirit will empower them. I am praying today, Lord, to the degree, God, of their coming to you and of their worshiping you, Lord God, it's the same degree, Father, that you're going to meet them at their point of need, Lord. Lord Jesus, we lift up our hands to you. Let's all just worship God and just say, Lord, we lift up our hands to you and we declare, Father God, that I will not be moved, Lord, because you are holding me close to you, Father. We give you all the glory, all the praise, God, and let this life be lived up in adventure with you, Lord Jesus Christ. We give you all glory, all praise, all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's just give the Lord a clap of praise.